Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt. Hope everybody is enjoying their week, having a great day today, and we are inside of the studios here with Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Proud to be here with you and spend some time with you this morning. Always having a good time here on the broadcast and appreciate you tuning in. You are listening on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt. You might also be on the homepage of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com. And of course, you are on facebook.com backslash live now DT tuning in to the broadcast. It is now this portion of the show, and this video has been saved for you up until now. And that is my, my conversation with the Syracuse players. Eric Dungy coming up in just a few moments here on the broadcast. As So my Q&A with Eric Dungy, the quarterback of the team, as well as running backs Jarvion Howard, who's a true freshman, and Mo Neal, who is a junior, and, of course, Dino Babers, the head coach of the team. That's all coming up here on the broadcast. So I'm very excited for this opportunity in this moment to share this with you as Syracuse gets set to face off against the Clemson Tigers in a big-time matchup. Very excited about the opportunity to have this on the show. So make sure that you're tuning in right now. And I'm very, very, very pumped for this moment. It's a big time game. Two teams are 4-0. and Somebody's coming out of this 4-1. and Somebody's coming out of this 5-0. and And with that being said, without further ado, I want to jump in to the matchup here and let you listen in to my conversations with the head coach, Dino Babers, as well as players on the team, Eric Dungy. Jarvion Howard and Mo Neal. We're going to start with Eric Dungy in the grand scheme of things here, and then we'll move on to Jarvion Howard, then Mo Neal, and then the head coach of the team, Dino Babers, all coming up here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. So let's head into that conversation in this moment that I got to have this week with the man, Eric Dungy of the Syracuse Orange. This is what Eric Dungy had to say to me about his team right now this season. And we're going to start things off in our conversation with Eric Dungy on what he's seen from the team as far as growth-wise from last season to this season, from defeating Clemson at home last season, who was the reigning national champion at the time, to where the team stands this season. This is what Eric Dungy had to say about that. Um, I think it's just uh, it gives us some confidence, really, um, that you can play with some of those teams like that and that you can beat them. Um, I think that's a big thing for us. But like I said, you just can't get comfortable with that. You really just got to keep moving forward. The weapons that you have, just what you can say about some of those young receivers, especially how they've stepped up. Um, I think they've done a great job. Um, I think they're they're getting better week by week and they're improving and they're making small improvements week by week. And I'm looking forward to seeing them, you know, get in the film room and um, just make more improvements. Dante, Mo, Jarvion, just what you can say about how they've helped your job be a little bit easier this year so far. Uh, yeah, Dante and Mo, they bring a, a lot of experience, and they help Jarvion along. Um, Jarvion's definitely got, you know, that power to them. Um, but Mo and uh, Dante especially, they got, you know, all that wisdom with them, and they do a great job with the run uh, with the run block, or not run block, you know, pass block and running the ball hard when we need it. That coming from Eric Dungy, speaking on the run game, which is only fair if he's going to speak on the run game to head to those runners. And so the first one we're going to have up here of the backfield is Jarvion Howard. Jarvion Howard is a true freshman on the team who's broken some big runs in the first four games this season en route to Syracuse's 4-0 and start. Jarvion Howard and I got to spend a lot of time together, and this is what he had to say. This conversation is an extensive conversation on Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. So I feel very proud and honored to be able to share this with you. You're not going to find it anywhere else. This is what Jarvion Howard had to say to me about what made his early success on the team, in his opinion. Just more hard and everybody at practice. Uh, just keeping uh, the other guys, keeping me going. And that's the only thing, just keeping the record zero zero, and just knowing that we got to come out each and every day and grind. Mo Neal. What has he taught you? Oh, yeah, he's an amazing person all the way around. Um, just having more in the room is just something. It's different. Each and every back in the room is something different. Um, so we just can't talk specifically on Mo Neal. Um, running back court, we're trying, we're working hard. That's the only thing we can ask for. 
Mo and Dante's leadership, the fact that they've been here. Eric Dungey was talking about that, about what they bring experience-wise. So, like you said, as a running back room, what do Mo and Dante bring as leaders? It's keeping everybody going. It's not even the point of them teaching us. It's just the point of them keeping the positive aspect of it, keeping us going, not letting us drop our head at bad times, um, just keeping us going overall. You've had the opportunity to get out there. Did you get the sense of that? going into the season and coming through fall camp that you were going to get your number called or did it kind of surprise you when coaches like it out there? Just got to stay ready. Um, <laughs> the thing that happened with it, with that, um, he was just like, you up. And I have always had in back of my mind, my number be called, just stay ready. But on thing coach did was just give me an opportunity and I just had to take it from there. Bring me into that first big play that you were able to break. Just once you get that out of the way, did it make everything else kind of feel a little bit easier after that once you were able to break it open? Well, I can't really just say it just made everything else go smoothly. Um, the main thing is just taking one play at a time. I mean, a good play, boom, that's gone. A bad play, boom, that's gone. Just taking one play at a time is how we, is how we operate. So... Big plays don't come, bad plays don't come. Just how you just go out there and go to the next the next play. We know that Dante can score and he can break open some plays. Mo Neal as well. For you as a true freshman, you've been able to break it out into the open field. Just what you can say about you know, your talents and what you bring to the table because the fans have seen you, especially here in the Dome, do what you can do. I mean, that's kind of hard. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it, uh, to some people it could be special. But, I mean, things happen. I mean, it could have been just my game. Um, it could be Mo game. It could be it's just whoever really have the high hand. Um, just keeping them going and keep me going during the week, that's that's the main reason why I get me my adrenaline pump just because they be like, okay, you got when you get in, just handle your business. You know what you're capable of. And that's the only thing I can thank them about. The running backs get a lot of the credit, but the offensive line obviously is a huge piece of this. Just what you can say about the offensive line that you have on the team with Cody Conway and Aaron Service and so on and so forth. Just what you take away from those guys and the work that they do to make sure that you have those holes. Practice. <laughs> yeah, I come see practice. Um, day 100, every play. They coming in, blocking hard, blocking hard, blocking hard, holding, keeping the running backs to a high standard, and that's what it opens up. If it's not open, I know it's going to open eventually if we're dealing with those guys. Um, the offensive line just got to come out. We're we going to fight, and that's it. You've been able to break it out into the open field and get those big runs and get almost to that point. Is, is there frustration right at the end in those last two yards not crossing? I mean, not really. <clears throat> I know it's my time. Um, I mean, it's two yards. I just got to work hard at practice to get to work and get those next two yards when I, when I break again. Um, but it's not really frustration because it's not really a selfish thing. Um, if I get down at the one and it is what it is on to the next play, yeah. you just got to just uh, grasp the moment when it's time. So, I mean, if it's there, you got to take it. If it's not, it's just your chance. You weren't here for the Clemson game last season when Syracuse won that game. What has the team told you about it, the guys told you about it, and does last season play into this season at all, or are they just taking this as a clean slate? Oh, no. Every game that we took from from Western Michigan to now, 0-0, zero, zero, clean slate. We're not looking at old oh, before and no, before and no. It's no big – you know what I'm saying? It's no big hype. We're just coming out, working hard every day. You know what I'm saying? We treating them as, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a team. Can't sleep on nobody. If we were playing major Pee Wee team, we treat them the same as Clemson. Yeah. We don't look up, you know what I'm saying? We keep everybody on the same page. We're going to come out, we're going to work hard at practice the same way the whole week. Dino and the staff got you to come here. Going through your recruitment, besides Dino, who were some of the other coaches that played a big role in getting you here to Syracuse? Uh, well, to be honest, it was like coaches changing, but it was Lustig, Lynch, um, just the whole staff really. Um, they played a big role. We just they 
it was nothing really just – it was because of my choice. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really look at a coaching. Yeah. It was my choice, and I just like what, what they had, what the Syracuse had to offer. So that's how I looked at it. Hindsight being 2020, deciding to come here. I know you're only four games in, but what do you like about the culture, the environment, kind of where the team is at, knowing that you made this decision, now that you look back at that decision, just how good was that decision for you as of right now? I'm not looking at it from the, the high point from, oh, before I know, if we were or four. I just like the way we come out, practice. Um, I like the way we, like, overall as a team, like, the culture of the fans and, you yeah. know, everything ties in together. Um, if I know my team even 100%, I'm down for them. If we go downhill from now on, you know, up from now on, I'm, I'm 100% with them. If we give 100% as a team, I'm with us. Eric Dungy's been in. Tommy DeVito's been in. You've gotten to play with both of them. What do you like of both of the quarterbacks out there because they both had success so far? Can't really, you know what I'm saying? Can't really speak on that. Uh, that's quarterbacks, only quarterbacks, um, both good players. When you're out there with them, they both obviously have their skill sets and their abilities. Do you feel that leadership? I mean, do you guys corral around them, no matter who it is under center? Do you feel that there's that unity? Yeah, everybody has it. You know what I'm saying? Both quarterbacks have leadership. It don't really, no matter who in the game, they all keep us at a high standard as a running back. They don't look at us no differently. They don't look at us like a number, as a player. They look at us as the same person. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I look at I look at the quarterbacks as being like, okay, that's Eric Donji. Okay, that's Tommy DeVito. Quarterbacks, they bring the same thing to the table when I see it. Joe Morris was retired and, and had that jersey put up there, number 47. He said he wanted to rush for 1,000 yards in his entire career at Syracuse. He did it three times out of four seasons. Did you get to spend any time with him as a team? Was there anything that you could take away from him as a running back to a running back? Joe Morris? Uh, yeah. I never really – I haven't met Joe Morris. No, but you see that moment and obviously the history of, of Ernie Davis and Jim Brown and Joe Morris and Floyd Little and whatnot. Does that mean anything to you as a running back down in Orange? I mean, it's an honor, but – it's an honor, but – I really don't need to take time out there. Yeah. It's an honor. I, I like what they did here um, with the 44, but I really don't. I really can't even speak on that. It's a here and now thing but yeah. for you. Donovan Darius did get to speak to you guys in the locker room, though. Do you remember what he said in that Florida State game? Um, just grab the arm and come out and play hard. And that's the only thing that stuck with me throughout the uh, whole time he was talking. The only thing that stuck out to Jarvion Howard from Donovan Darius, grasp the moment and just go out and play hard. That coming in my extensive conversation you'll only find here on Wake Up Call with Dan Satora, and that being with Jarvion Howard. Fellow member of the backfield that he brought up in conversation is Mo Neal, and that means that Mo Neal is next up on the broadcast here. So this is my one-on-one -on -one conversation with Mo Neal, who is a junior on the team. Where's my number 21? I know it's his number, but you know, I was born on October 21st, so it's always been mine as well. Mo Neal had an opportunity, and Mo Neal and I had an opportunity to have an extensive conversation ourselves this week. And this conversation is coming to you right now on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, starting with his thoughts on Jarvion Howard, who you just heard from. Uh, you know, he's poised for success, man. You know, he kind of remind me of me coming in. You know, he's hungry as a freshman. He's he's trying to make big plays. He have made big plays uh, for us, and uh, he's going to be, you know, a sight to see in the future once he, you know, calm down and relaxes and, you know, we just let the game come to him more and, you know, just learn more, you know, mentally, you know, because, you know, that's what I had to do. You know, my freshman year, it's a big difference, man. You know, once you understand the game, understand the offense better, and, uh, you know, learn defenses and stuff like that, you know, it helps out a lot. Speaking to me about the, the mental game for you, because it's such a huge part of the game that doesn't get talked about nearly enough, from when you were a freshman to now, bring me into how you've mentally progressed, in your opinion. Um, you know, just just recognizing defenses, uh, studying film more, you know, just being more in tune. Also, it helped, you know, with me, you know, 
knowing what I have to do, you know, you know, knowing what, you know, what everybody else around me has, you know, and it helps out a lot, you know, because I can just go play ball now, you know, I could just focus on other stuff and, uh, you know, like that's just, you know, our opponent of the week and, uh, you know, just mentally, you know, just knowing what they're going to do before they do it is a big help. You've been a big part of the rushing attack more so this season than your first couple of seasons. Just what you can say about getting onto the field and the trust that you've built with the coaching staff to be out there. Um, you know, you know, it all started back, you know, just, uh, you know, summer, you know, just getting in the weight room, working hard, you know, putting on a few pounds, um, you know, just trying to get ready, you know, uh, for the year and uh, just get my body in the best of shape I can, you know, to take on uh, the, uh, a lot of carries. Um, you know, I felt like I have uh, built, you know, some trust, you know, with the coaching staff, you know, from the past couple of years. And, uh, you know, I put in a good fall count, you know, worked my butt off. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, you can see it paying off, you know, and, and the offensive line doing, doing their job real well. And, uh, you know, everything's coming together. I want to ask you about that line and how much they've grown in the now this being your third season, just what you've seen from them, not only the starters, but the depth behind them as well. Um, you know, it's a talented it's a talented group. You know, they uh they put in a lot of work. We we knew coming in that they was gonna be good. You know, they had a great fall camp, you know, they've been getting out the people all year long. Um, you know, they continue to do it. Uh, you know, just seeing those guys progress from my freshman year, you know, and you know, it's just, you know, amazing because, you know, those guys, you know, they've been together too, so they know each other. You know, we know them. We know what they're going to do. They know what we're going to do. So it's just good to have that familiar, familiar. Going into the season and fall camp, we talked about thunder and lightning, lightning and thunder back and forth between you and, and Dante Strickland. You guys have both gotten in, you know, done some good things this season so far and been utilized in different places. Just what you can say about playing off each other and how you guys have grown into that one-two punch so far. Uh, you know, yeah, like you said, we, we feed off each other, you know, um, every time we go in, you know, we tell each other, man, make a play, you know, let's make a play, you know, let's be that guy, let's be that guy to spark the team, and uh, we pride ourselves on, uh, you know, going out there, you know, each and every play, you know, just doing our best, and, uh, you know, making sure we're doing a good job, you know, with the, uh, without the ball in our hands, you know, just picking up blitzes, uh, carrying out our fakes and stuff like that, so we definitely feed off each other game and, uh, you know, try to make each other better. There was a QB sneak that Eric Dungey tried. Dante went up to him, and he kind of just handed the ball out, and then Dante took it to the left side. Yeah. Eric was talking about how Coach had said to him, Dino had said to him, great play, don't do it again. I asked Dino about that, and he said, it was absolutely a great play, and he better listen and not just hear me yeah. and not do it again. Yeah. What did you think of that play? Because it was kind of a – Cause you don't see that much, you know, too often where somebody's trying to sneak it in and then it's like, all right, you know what, you take it. Yeah, you, you don't see that often, man. You know, that's just a testament to how great Dungy is. You know, Dungy is always aware. Uh, you know, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't do something like that. You know, you wouldn't want a kid to do something like that. But, you know, a heads-up play like that, man, is, is, is you know, it's crazy, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, did nobody expect it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was a great play, you know, but, you know, like Coach said, you better listen to him. <laughs> You've been here for three seasons. Virginia Tech went down, Florida State, Clemson. These are story programs, and obviously Florida State may not be what it was a few years back, but these are story names, historic names in the ACC. What does it mean to you to be a part of each of these pieces, and what are these pieces doing to create the bigger puzzle for the team and for Syracuse? It means a lot being a part of this, man. You know, that's something I always wanted to do. I mean, when I made the decision to come here, I wanted to, you know, come to a prestigious program like Syracuse and, uh, you know, get it back on track to his winning ways, man, and, uh, you know, we, we uh, took the necessary steps, you know, I think it's all starting to come together, you know, with those uh, signature wins that we have under our belt, and, uh, you know, it's showing, you know, we off to a 4-0 start, you know, everybody got a lot of confidence, the guys are excited, and, uh, you know, we just decided to, you know, keep it rolling. How do you keep it focused, being 4-0 for the first time in 27 years? There's all this outside noise. How do you stay focused on the task at hand and do what Jervion Howard was saying to me, which is every week's got to be 0-0? Zero, zero? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, you know, we, we, we got to take each, you know, we got to go into every week, you know, uh, just focus on that game. You know, we can't look ahead. You know, we can't look in the past. Um, you know, we just got to keep getting better and better, you know, each and every week, man. And, uh, you know, we just got to stay focused. You know, everybody's got to do their job. Everybody's got to buy into the system. We can't be selfish, um, you know, no matter who gets the credit. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, we're doing that, you know, and uh, we just got to continue to do that.
Joe Morris, he got retired that number 47 jersey inside the Carrier Dome before the UConn, or during the UConn game. What did that mean to you to see that honor? Because obviously you're carrying the torch of being a running back here at Syracuse. So what did that mean to you to see him finally be honored for something that he did? A few, obviously, uh, almost three decades ago. I meant a lot, you know, seeing a legend like that come back, you know, getting the uh, recognition that he deserves, you know, it was, it was a great feeling, you know, um, you know, like, it was just amazing, you know, like, you know, dang, like, you know, that was, that was a legend. He was here in my shoes, who played the same position, so, you know, it was, it was great seeing that. Clemson. What do you remember of that victory that you can take into this? Obviously, their defensive line, everybody came back. So just what you remember of that matchup, what you're seeing on film, knowing that obviously they're going to come to play every single game. Mm -hmm. They're trying to be national contenders every year. And yeah. you faced a lot of those faces that you'll be up against again. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we know we went their uh, best shot. You know, they, they're going to come out home. They come out home each and every game. You know, and it doesn't help that, you know, that we gave them one of their two losses for, from last year. So, you know, they're definitely going to come out ready to compete. You know, those are a very group of uh, talented guys on both sides of the ball. And, uh, you know, we just got to come out and play, you know, uh, like we did last year. We came out, um, you know, everybody was focused. Um, you know, we didn't do nothing special. You know, we just came out and played football. And, uh, you know, just like I say, everybody's got to do their job. And lastly, for me, Dungy and DeVito, you've got to play with both of them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they've been successful in moving the ball up and down the field and getting into the end zone. What can you say about both of those guys under center? I know you've had more time with Dungy, but DeVito as well. Uh, yeah, uh, both of those guys are, uh, you know, Great players, man. You know, they bring, you know, a lot to the table, you know, and, uh, you know, whoever's in, you know, we, we keep it rolling. Uh, our coaching staff does a good job of, uh, you know, having our people, you know, ready to go because, you know, if something's happened, the next man is up. And, uh, you know, that's what I really like. And uh, we're not losing a step if we got either, either one of them in. So, you know. That coming once again from Mo Neal. Mo Neal running back on the Syracuse Orange, who has had a lot of success this season, more success this season than he has had in previous seasons as far as running the ball and helping Syracuse to get that ball down the field. Syracuse is at Clemson this Saturday, September 29th in Death Valley. Number three ranked Clemson is 4-0. Syracuse is 4-0. The game is at noon Eastern time on ABC and on the Watch ESPN app. And just to make a quick note here about Mo Neal so far this season, he is the he he has the most yards of any true running back on Syracuse's team. Leading the backfield is Eric Dungey with 354 yards. Right behind him, as far as running backs go, is Mo Neal with 346, just eight yards behind Eric Dungey. So for everybody that likes Eric Dungey and what he could do on his feet. Mo Neal is very, very close to that. The team has only played in four games, yet they've run rushed for over 1,100 yards this season, 1,112 yards, 184 to Jarvion Howard, 170 to Dante Strickland, 35 to Markenzie Pierre, 7 to Sean Riley, Tommy DeVito with 21, Mo Neal with 346, like I said, and Eric Dungy with 354. Mo Neal is averaging just about five yards per carry this season. And what he's done game-wise, he had 84 yards at Western Michigan, 71 yards against Wagner, 75 against Florida State, and 116 for his first 100-yard rushing game of this season against UConn most recently. And finally, coming up next, you're going to hear from the man that is the head coach of the squad, Mr. Dino Babers, is coming up next here on the broadcast. I had an opportunity to speak with him on the ACC teleconference and Dino Babers and I had a lot of different things to discuss, four different topics, and they're all coming to you right now on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Just to, to speak on the elevated play of the defense in the last two games for you, I know that you've spoken on the uh, praises of your defensive coordinator, Brian Ward, and the staff, and just what you can say you've seen in these last two games specifically. Well, I just I think we've been extremely uh, fundamentally sound, and we've We've really done some nice things. We're winning our one-on-one -on -one battles up front with the defensive line. We're being opportunistic in the back end with our when our DBs get an opportunity to touch a football for an interception. Their catching percentage is through the roof right now, which we're really excited about. And then our linebackers, although they're the youth of our defense, they've been coming along and then playing steady for us. So that combination of the guys up front really uh, setting the pace has really been effective for us. 
And then as far as running the ball, when Joe Morris had come back in to be honored, he said that he spoke with you about kind of the future and the guys on the ground and respecting Eric Dungy's ability to run. But when you look at the true running backs, Jarvion Howard, as well as uh, Mo Neal and Dante Strickland, just what you've seen from them this season as a group moving forward. I think as a group, we have, you know, we have a good, a good, a good solid running crew. I think everybody kind of brings their own dimension back there. Everybody has their own special talents. I don't think that one guy has stood out. If one guy has stood out, he'd be the guy back there most of the time. And until someone separates themselves from the group, I think those guys have been very unselfish the way they work together. Coach, uh, to follow up, coming into Syracuse, you took some of the players that were obviously there before and then have brought in and recruited players that are under, you know, obviously your system and, and your coaches. With that balance, just what you can say about growing this team and being successful with a team that partially had been there before you and then the other part had come obviously during that because I don't think there's a lot of respect from the outside looking in of how hard it is to balance that together and find success. Well, first of all, that's a fantastic question. Here at Syracuse, we really don't, you know, just kick kids to the side. We really want young men to be able to graduate and graduate with their degrees. It's really a, the mission statement of this university and something that, uh, as a, an employee of this university, that we ta- I take great pride in. So it's it's you're right. We try to jigsaw puzzle this thing together. We try to take uh, what we can from the old team and then recruit what we can from outside and try to put something together that's respectable on the football field that uh, that people would enjoy looking at and, and gives us an opportunity to win. And it's a slow process. It's a lot slower than other processes, but we do feel like it's the proper way to go about it. And going through this process, just what you can say on the recruiting trail from the day that you got into Syracuse to where you stand right now, how the response has been, and if there has been an uptick or more appreciation for the program and what you've been able to build so far as you continue? Well, I think there's no doubt the the win over Virginia Tech our first year with them winning the other side of the conference and then playing a close game against Clemson in the championship, uh, champion, ACC championship game obviously helped us. The win last year against Clemson actually helped us as well. We haven't had the blessing of being able to go to a bowl game in our first two years which is obviously a negative, but to have two wins like that and have something to point to to tell young men that if you come here, we're doing it the right way, you can have an opportunity to play early, and you're going to play big-time football, especially when you play in the ACC Atlantic, has definitely helped. And now we just got to see how far we can take this thing. It's one game at a time for us. Uh, We are not looking ahead. Um, We have a a, a huge task this Saturday versus a – a championship football team, a top four caliber football team, and we're going to go out there and give it our best. That coming from Dino Babers of the Syracuse Orange in our conversation this week. I want to thank the ACC for the teleconference opportunity that they give us every single week to speak with the coaches of the Atlantic Coast Conference, and Dino Babers obviously being one of them once again. He will face off on the road at Clemson. It's the third time he's faced Clemson. He was on the road at Clemson and then back at home defeating Clemson this past season when Clemson was the reigning national champion coming in and ranked number two in the country and probably the second biggest win ever inside of the Carrier Dome next to the Nebraska game of the 80s when Nebraska was ranked number one in the country. So Dino Babers giving Syracuse some big-time wins inside of the Carrier Dome. Virginia Tech in his first season of 2016. Clemson in his se- in his second season, 2017, and most recently Florida State inside of the Dome in 2018. Now he's looking to get a big-time road win. Syracuse has struggled to be a strong road team in recent history. He's looking to change that. The team is looking to change that. And whoever goes and wins this game between Syracuse and Clemson will be 5-0. and The other team will be 4-1. and And believe it or not, folks, the team that's 5-0 and is going to be at the top of the Atlantic division of the ACC. So if Syracuse is to defeat Clemson, they will be in first place of the Atlantic division after finishing in seventh place in recent history and being bottom feeders for the last few seasons of being in the ACC. Dino Babers looking to change that. The team looking to change that. They're locked in at 0-0 every single week, and they definitely are feeling, at least from my perspective, being around this team for as long as I have and covering them for as long as I have over a decade's time, I haven't seen a team with this type of attitude and this type of fervor in a while. Reminds me of the Doug Marone time 
and when Doug Marone was starting to get clicking and, and, and get those victories, but yet a little bit different. Dino Babers and this team are on, are on a precipice right now. They are on a cliff, and they are either going to jump and reach the other side or they're jump and might have to scrape at it, but I don't think they're going to hit rock bottom. I don't think they're going to fall off this thing. They're either going to jump and clear the thing or they're going to jump and hold on to a rock and then have to pull themselves up. But I think this is a different Syracuse team for all the right reasons in the here and now that we're seeing. I want to give a special thanks to Eric Dungy for spending some time with me this week. Jarvion Howard, true freshman running back, for also spending some time on the show with a conversation you won't find anywhere else. Mo Neal for doing the same thing, the junior running back, and, of course, head coach Dino Babers for spending some extensive time with me on the ACC teleconference this week. Much respect and much appreciation to Dino Babers and the Syracuse team. We'll be back here on Facebook Live in just a moment with John Newman of Newman Sports Cards, Jordan Newman coming on as well. So you'll see us in the studio on Facebook Live, facebook.com backslash live now DT. And you will also be able to continue to listen to us for a little while longer on mixlr.com backslash wake up call DT as we typically go to 11 a.m. But we're branching out and always giving you some more love on TGIF. You can also check it out on wake up call dt.com so we'll take a fast break we'll be right back thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast for everybody that's watching and listening on facebook live make sure you spin back around with us we will be back here in the same spot facebook.com backslash live now dt in just a few moments once again a big thanks to dino babers eric dungy jarvion howard and mo neal for talking with me this week as well as kendall coleman who you heard from earlier in the week sean riley as well and gabe haran who caught his first ever touchdown as a college football player on his first ever play in his first ever game. First first ever play in his first ever game. First ever catch is his first ever touchdown. I think that's a pretty good start for number 88, Gabe Haran, who was recruited by the Big Ten and Syracuse and ultimately decided to stay at home with the Syracuse Orange, the only scholarship local player on the team right now. I hope that that changes and they add more. But darn it, doesn't it feel good when Gabe Haran gets a touchdown for this team? We'll take a step aside. We'll be back in just a moment on Facebook Live and on MixLR.com backslash Wake Up Call DT. Syracuse, Clemson, this Saturday, September 29th, in Death Valley at noon Eastern time on ABC.